Okay, so we've had a session of discussion with you about correction factors, the SAE J1349, the J607 correction formulas, and we basically touched on those focusing on atmospheric corrections. And then we showed you how our sensor box has electronics, uh, sensors in it for monitoring barometric pressure, air temperature, and humidity. Well, there's one more factor that Superflow has always used in its engine dyno applications. We don't use this in chassis dyno applications, but on engine dyno applications, we factor in something we call friction torque. And that has to do with the mechanical efficiency of the engine itself. When this engine's spinning around, there's losses internal to the engine. So inside the combustion chamber where we make our power, uh, some of that power is lost simply spinning the components of the engine itself. Now we've been using frictional loss lookup tables since uh, the inception of Superflow dynos and in the early 90s we modified those tables um, based on studies done by American Honda and some SAE papers that they had published. Uh, what we did at that time was we actually modified our frictional torque lookup tables to uh, incorporate some of the data that they found and they did some pretty extensive testing and uh, if you're interested in that paper we can provide a reference to it uh, just call up Superflow and we'll uh, we'll give you that reference but nevertheless the way it works is this when we have the dynamometer hooked up to the engine we're gonna measure torque we call that brake torque uh, because it's measured at the brake. And that's going to be the torque that's sort of left over. And we're going to call that raw torque. But when we apply our atmospheric corrections, the J1349 or the J607 formulas, we need to incorporate um, those atmospheric corrections to the total torque made in the combustion chamber. So the formula that we use is we take engine torque plus friction torque. So that would mean the torque we measured back here on the brake plus the frictional torque that we're estimating the engine makes and we'll talk about how we do that in a moment. We're adding those two together. We then apply the correction formula, the multipliers that we've talked about in the past. That gives us the total torque. We apply the atmospheric correction and then we subtract back out the raw frictional torque value, and that becomes our corrected engine torque number. That's why it's been done on Superflow dynos since their inception, since the first SF800 came out. And it's the way we continue to do it. And the reason is we believe it's a more accurate way of applying atmospheric corrections. If you only apply atmospheric correction to the raw torque that you measured back at the brake, you're perhaps missing where that actual peak torque occurs and perhaps for your engine development program that makes a big difference to you. Now how do we figure out the friction torque? The SAE J1349 equation simply assumes a mechanical efficiency of about 18 percent in its formula. And if you go research the formula, purchase the SAE document, you'll see how they implement it. But it's a straight 18 percent for any engine, any type, no matter how many cylinders, what length of stroke it has, or whatever. The Honda study done back in the 90s, um, their reference, what they found was that the stroke of the engine had a great deal of significance on the amount of friction in the engine. And so what we've done with our formula is we take the engine's stroke, figure out the displacement of the engine with bore and stroke number of cylinders, and then when we run the engine, we have RPM. And with that and the stroke of the engine, we can figure out piston speed in feet per minute. And we use a table with some coefficients that we've developed to look up that piston speed in feet per minute. And then we use that in a formula to calculate the frictional torque losses. So our frictional torque table varies or the friction torque that you get from an engine varies based on your stroke. So if you're building a <clears throat> big block like this one that has maybe a four inch stroke, it's going to have different frictional torque losses at say 6,000 RPM than a small block engine that only has a three and a half inch stroke. And so that's how we make those adjustments based on engine size. That's the way it's always been done. 
on Superflow engine dynos. And we continue to do that today. So when you're applying that multiplier <coughs> that you saw in the other formulas that we did, where we're simply taking, let's say this engine measured 100 horsepower, and we said we're going to multiply by 1.04, we would see 104 horsepower corrected due to an atmospheric correction. That's not exactly the only math going on behind there. That 1.04 might actually turn out to be 1.05 in the sense that uh, the, the power that we're going to get is from the frictional torque added back into the engine torque. So there may be a slight difference than just that straight 4%. We get that call every once in a while, people saying, why doesn't my corrected number match exactly to the multiplier that it's using? It's because of the frictional torque lookup tables. So atmospheric corrections, formulas provided by the SAE, weather station on your dyno to do the measurement for those atmospheric corrections. And finally, we apply some frictional torque values to our engine dynos that we, that we provide. And that is the end of how we do the total correction for power numbers on a Superflow engine dyno.